I'm having to record this narration, something happened to the sound in this video. But here we are at the back of the truck again. I made a trip to Cincinnati. Uh, a fella had this lathe advertised, and this is a Craftsman, which is also made by Atlas, the same company that made my lathe. Um, a 12-inch lathe, which has the, almost all the same parts in the carriage. Um, it's a 54-inch bed, so it's a little longer. And he sold me this partial lathe and um, the counter shaft pulley you see there and the covers to my right for a uh, hundred bucks. Phenomenal deal. Um, I had, uh, as it turns out later, we'll see in some videos of some broken parts in the lathe I'm restoring. And um, this is going to turn out to save me quite a bit of money. Now this lathe was a gear change lathe. You see that gear change chart in the cover I just picked up. Um, and also I'm turning the uh, turning the compound slide there. There's much less play in the uh, lead screws and, um, and the nuts in this lathe. The uh, threading um, shaft, the, the carriage lead screw, is in much better shape. Now it's longer than the one for my lathe. My lathe uh, has a worn out one, but this is long enough that I could machine it down and fit it in uh, my 42 inch lathe restoration. Um, now, this was a pretty neat trip. I lost most of the video, it came out bad, but I recorded the trip down to see this guy. This was an old man who was into making cannon parts and uh, for some kind of uh, uh, reenactor group. And he took the head of the lathe and somehow set it up on his bridge port so that he could turn um, some kind of spiral fluted uh, uh, bolts for this big cannon he was making. And, and these were the parts that were left over. And, um, and, you know, he was a very, very knowledgeable guy. People are a little funny when you come to pick something up on a Craigslist thing. There's so many stories that they don't know if you're, they're a little concerned about who you are and, and um, I was hoping to make a connection with him because I would love to have seen his real workshop where his Bridgeport was and all of his cannon making stuff. It would have been quite an experience. Um, but just a fantastic opportunity. I got a box of parts with this, including the change gears, that wrench that just came up there. Those sell for about 25 bucks. Um, let's see what else I show here. I wish I could hear myself. <laughs> Anyways, uh, just a phenomenal deal. All the, the handle on the compound slide, that highest handle you see there, those sell for between $60 and $70. And uh, mine was broken on my lathe. So it was really important for me to find one of those. Uh, and only having 100 bucks in the lathe, you can see where I'm getting my money back on this lathe really, really quickly. Um, this combination wrench that I'm showing right now, this fits the tailstock and the... Uh, square headed bolts on the lathe. Um, that particular wrench is, is kind of pricey to buy and I, there was one included in the deal with this lathe which is pretty phenomenal. Here's some of the gear change gears that come with it. Uh, there's the banjo with some gears on it. Um, that's a rocker for the tool post. Wow. This is silly how I'm showing all this stuff works. <laughs> uh, tool holder. Look at that tool hanging way out on the tool holder. That had to be vibrating like mad. Whoever used that, which probably the uh, old fellow I bought this off of never used that. I think he was a lot wiser. I don't know why I'm still talking about this tool post. Holy cow. It's boring. Set it down. What else we got in here? Well, it's been a while since this actually happened, so I'm trying to remember. I must be stacking through the gears. Oh, we got some uh, various tool bits. He probably had a lot of better stuff than that and just left me uh, things he didn't couldn't care less about. Slitting saw. I don't have an arbor to hold anything like that. I guess it's just all to say when you're working on a project and you get a chance to buy some parts, snap them up. You can always 
sell off what you don't need on eBay. Um, now I have sold a lot of pieces to this lathe uh, that I didn't need and I replaced some parts in my lathe that were better in this one than the lathe I'm restoring, the red uh, QC42 that I've got a video series running on right now. Oh, this lathe came with a lathe stand. Now this is a pretty spindly, thinly made stand. Um, I've been looking for a metal lathe stand for my lathe, but uh, you know this thing had some problems and it wasn't really made heavily enough. And those angle braces mean that I can't put toolboxes down on the lower shelf, and I don't believe there actually was a lower shelf on this. So it's not a very, it's not a space-saving lathe stand. I really want the factory lathe stand. Now I ended up uh, advertising this for 30 bucks and nobody called, and then I advertised it for 20 bucks, and then a lady and her son came out, and she was going to clean it up and paint it and make a plant stand out of it. Which, hey, that's fantastic. It went to a good home. Probably somebody would have liked to have had that for a lathe, but that person never called me, so it never happened. Well, I think that pretty much sums it up. But uh, in later videos, I'll be using a lot of the parts out of this lathe. Uh, incidentally, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I sold a lot of the parts out of that lathe, uh, probably about $250 worth of parts out of that lathe and leftover for, leftovers for my other lathe. So I more than doubled uh, my cost on that. And, and I still have some stuff left over for that lathe, uh, including the lathe bed. And I haven't run across a lathe that needs a lathe bed. I kind of hate to sell that online because it's so heavy and big. Uh, it be a little bit complicated to ship, but uh, they do sell those uh, on eBay, you'll see something like that go from 150 to 200 bucks plus a lot of shipping um, because it's awful heavy. And I'm sure somebody would really appreciate having that lathe bed. There's always the temptation of converting my 42 inch lathe into that 54 inch lathe with that lathe bed. But, you know, I don't want to do that. I don't really need a lathe that long. And um, by now I've gotten my original lathe bed back machined and it's in just beautiful condition uh, so why would I want to use a used lathe bed when I have one that's been freshly machined so we'll uh, oh here uh, what I'm talking about now all these crazy body motions is I was originally considering using the stand as a grinder station and mounting uh, three grinders on it because I don't have any place to mount grinders or buffers right now um, I don't like that it's not on wheels I'd like to have something that I can push out of the way and because I don't have a lot of space. Um, but like I said, I end up selling this thing. But at this point, I'm still a little bit unsure of, of what I'm going to do. Uh, behind me there is our, uh, is our 1967 uh, Airstream Caravelle, which is uh, a restoration project that my wife and I are working on. Um, and you'll notice early on in my channel, I have a few uh, Airstream restoration videos. And I have a lot of footage that I haven't edited and put up. Uh, it's kind of related to camping and all that kind of stuff so I might leave that on this channel I might start a separate Airstream channel I don't know a um, couple of jet skis in the background there which I'm trying to get rid of I've traded the dual trailer that those two are sitting on for two singles and I sold the uh, three-place jet ski and then the two-place jet ski is sitting on a single and I still need to get rid of that uh, we're kind of slipping out of boating Although I'd like to build a canoe or a small boat to do some uh, uh, bushcrafting and uh, trekking down the local rivers in. So I hope I get to do that. I hope I get to do some kind of trip like that this summer. I think this probably ought to conclude this video. But uh, just this is part of the story of my uh, QC42 lathe restoration. This uh, back of the truck video. Thank you for watching.